I'm Jeanette Pincus, and this is uh, January 11th, uh, 2024, and I get the opportunity to interview Keith Robbins. This is very special for me to do this because you are a cousin, and um, it's very special. So thank you. To begin with, I'd like to ask you um, just to tell us about family, parents, grandparents, things like that, like where, where you were born, um, how the family, if you know anything about how we settled here, just whatever you feel like sharing with it. Well, I was born uh, on uh, December the 20th, 1928, on a Thursday. My parents were Ed Rabinowitz and Mary Byers Rabinowitz. Uh, my mother's uh, father was Frank Byers, who was an immigrant, of course, and settled in Dallas and uh, to my memory, he had a butcher shop on Alamo Street, which is sort of uh, north of the, of the uh, downtown now. And he was quite religious. Uh, he, in fact, he was one of the founders of Tefereth Israel. Um, how my mother and father met, I'm afraid I don't know. But uh, I was born at, Saint, at the old St. Paul Hospital on Bryan Street. And the, uh, my uh, grandfather lived just uh, a few blocks from there on Bryan, uh, further up on Bryan Street. Um, after I was born, uh, my father uh, ha owned a grocery store in Arlington, Texas. And so we moved to Arlington after my birth. And we lived there, uh, I was, uh, we lived there uh, until he, he passed. He passed uh, when I was around nine years old, leaving my mother. My mother was one of the original uh, 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 single mothers that you hear about these days. She had these, my sister was two years older than I was, so she had two small ch children when my father died. And so she decided, she was able to sell the, gro the, gro the uh, grocery store and she moved back to Dallas to move in with her sister, uh, my Aunt Sarah on the uh, house on Bryan Street where the family had always lived. And uh, <clears throat> I grew up there, went to school at, uh, at a grammar school close by called San Jacinto Grammar School. And uh, then uh, after a few years, my mother uh, bought a house on, uh, oh, my mother went to work, of course, she worked at the uh, tax assessor and collector's office in downtown Dallas, and she worked there for about 40 years. I remember her first salary, believe it or not, was $39 a month. Uh, but she raised us, and we really had no uh, any problem. We always had a roof over our head and food to eat. And uh, after we'd lived there for a number of years, uh, she bought a house on Lake... on. Uh, Lakeshore Drive, Lake Shore. over in East Dallas, and she bought it from SMU. And so we moved, my sister and I, and she moved over there. And It was her, right behind Aunt Celia, yeah, too. Yeah, it was, it was right, a house right behind her other sister, Celia Bender, who lived on uh, Lakewood. Uh, but since I moved over there, I went to Woodrow Wilson High School. And... Uh, that was one of the turning points of my life, actually. When I graduated from Woodrow Wilson, I was fortunate enough to get a uh, scholarship to SMU. If I, if I hadn't got that, I doubt that my mother would have been able to afford to send me to college. But with that scholarship, I went to SMU, and <laughs> for some reason, which I can't explain, because there were no doctors in our family, I... <laughs> I took, I took, I, uh, I, uh, I took pre-med and uh, spent two years at uh, SMU and then was able to go to Southwestern here in, uh, here in Dallas. I remember my interview at uh, Southwestern. They asked me why I wanted to be, a, to be a doctor, so I said, well, my mother's a widow. 
And I can't think of a better way to support her than, than, being, than being a doctor. And they, so they accepted me into uh, Southwestern, where I spent four years. And uh, luckily it was close to uh, my mother, and uh, uh, which made it uh, much easier on her. Then I interned at, um, at the City County Hospital in Houston <coughs> called Jefferson Davis. And I spent a year there and was supposed to go to the Korean War when I finished there. In fact, I had been inducted into the Army as a first lieutenant of the Medical Corps um, when I completed my internship. And then a month before I was supposed to, re was supposed to report for active duty, I get this telegram saying that they had that ar armistice in Korea, <laughs> and, and they didn't need any more doctors, so there I was. But I was lucky, I came back to Dallas and uh, I decided to be a pediatrician. My sister had actually married a doctor from uh, Chicago, his name was Philip Ross. What's your sister's name? Uh, Francis. Francis. My sister's okay. name Francis. She's a couple of years older than me. Anyway, she uh, met this uh, uh, physician when he was stationed at Love Field during the war, and they got married and uh, <coughs> lived in Chicago for a while. That's where he was from, and then they moved to Waco, where he practiced for many years. But anyway, I talked to him, and he said, well, you ought to go into pediatrics. That's the quickest way to start making a living. It's hard to do that in internal medicine, so I said, so I, so I enjoyed pediatrics when I was an intern, so I said, okay, so I got a residency at Children's Medical Center here. Spent a couple of years there, and I spent a year at, at the old St. Paul where I was born. When I got through there, I uh, went into practice with an older doctor called Dr. Alfieri here, who was looking for somebody to help him. So he gave me a job, and I spent a couple of years with him and really learned a lot from him. And then I had a relative named Max Blend, who was a who was a obstetrician here for many years, and he came to me one day and said he was starting a clinic out in Farmers Branch, and he wondered if I interested in being the pediatrician there. So uh, I said, "Yeah, sure." Uh, so I looked into it. So I went out there. Oh, I forgot to, another thing that's important. Uh, right after my. Uh, I went into practice a couple of years in 1960. I met Joyce. We had a blind date together. That was important. <laughs> By the way. So that was important. And so you By were in way. Dallas. Yeah. I had moved here, uh, yes. She had moved here from Mobile. And I'd seen her actually once at a party that, that, that we all gave. But I really didn't know her until I had this blind date. Who was mm -hmm. that? Uh, uh, it was... Uh, David Sakura and David Sakura and uh, Sonny Sakura. Uh -huh. And anyway, uh, I had a blind date with her, and so we got to going together. And thank God she uh, decided to marry me. <laughs> so we got married in <clears throat> June the twelfth of nineteen sixty. Mm -hmm. And then that was about the time I'd been out in Farmers Branch for a year or two. And the funny thing was, she was worried. Because then Farmer's Ranch was just isolated. It there was, was farmland. Nothing but farmland between my office, that little office that Max Glenn started, and uh, Northwest Highway. Just nothing but farmland. But anyway, I, my practice uh, developed okay. Mm -hmm. And we had these two wonderful sons, Daryl and Craig, who have really turned out wonderfully. So good to us now. Um, but that's a, as far as but that's about it as far as our families go. Mm -hmm. Can you think of anything else? Well, we had five grandchildren. Yeah. Well, now we have five grandchildren and three great grandchildren, believe it or mm -hmm. not, who are really a, a wonderful family we have. We're very close. Luckily, they all live here in Dallas. That's wonderful. Which makes it real good. And so many people we know, our friends are trained live all over the country, but all of our children live right here in Dallas. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Okay, whatever. I well, can't. I'm, I'm going to go back a little bit and have you fill some things in for me. You mentioned about... Um, Focus on what? Um, tell me, um, when we were talking about Frank Byers, I happened to look up, because I mean, you had mentioned um, 
about him being a religious man. Uh, I looked a bit to Farad Israel. I saw that he was the first president um, after Farad. Yeah. Started in 1893 and stayed president until 1927. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Just 34 you know, years. More than I do, actually. So I didn't know that. It happened to be when I was there. So um, going back, it's, I understand like um, you lived with Aunt Sarah um, in home. So I guess you were with a lot of, were there a lot of family um, gatherings together? Because I know um, your mom yeah, um, had. had a lot of siblings. So, mm -hmm. Well, my mother, uh, actually, I, I spent a lot of time with. Uh, Shirley's uh, t uh, two children, Jerome and Hay and uh, and uh, Shirley. Uh, we palled around a lot together, and we went a lot of places together there. Uh, I don't really remember my grandparents too much uh, because uh, I th he passed away when I was quite young. Mm -hmm. Frank Byers did, so I don't. And I I, re I remember how they looked, but I can't remember my grandmother's name. That was uh, Fanny. Because I really didn't Fanny. have too, Fanny, mm -hmm. yeah, um, Fanny, but I really didn't have too much contact mm -hmm. with them. And I did have contact with uh, the rest of the family. My mother had um, three brothers and three sisters. I think so. And uh, uh, her aunt, we lived with one of them, Aunt Sarah, and her husband Harry on that house on Bryan Street. And uh, Aunt, Aunt Celia married Jake Bender, who was uh, uh, quite prominent in the uh, uh, synagogue also. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, li they lived uh, uh, primarily on, uh, in Lakewood, on Lakewood. And uh, she had uh, several children, Alvin and... Uh, and uh, Margaret and Thelma. Yeah, Margaret and Thelma. And I did spend some time with them. I would go over there and visit. Uh, uh, you at said their house. you used to sit on the front porch. Yeah, and I, uh, when I was going to med school during my after my first year, uh, getting ready for the second year. Uh, I would take some of those. Then in those days, there were no computers or cell phones or anything. Every we learned everything out of books. And I remember that summer before I started my second year, I would take the book on pathology and go over to. Uh, Aunt Celia's house and sit on their front porch, which is for like a uh, they had a covered front porch, and she she would bring me lemonade out to drink, mm -hmm. <laughs> and Celia would, and I would sit there and study this book in preparation for the next year in medical school. But Jerome and Shirley and I spent a lot of time together. We played uh, tennis together, and we went to watermelon parties, uh, watermelon parks together, mm -hmm. and. Uh, um, so I was very friendly with them. You played tennis with them. Yeah, so. Jerome and I played tennis together, and uh, and I used to uh, have a lot, spend a lot of time with Shirley. We, we were really were very close, actually. That's right. I remember telling um, you that. Um, so the neighborhood that I mean, you mentioned, the neighborhood. Do so you feel like there were a lot of other Jewish kids around you when you did that? How was it like in school? To tell you the truth, no. Uh, I, uh, and for, oh, I'll, I'll tell you one thing that I forgot to mention. Mm -hmm. Since we lived in Arlington, uh, I went to Sunday school at, Sh at Sheriff Israel, which was in, all, all the Jews lived in South Dallas then, mm -hmm. and all the synagogues were there. And I went to Sunday school, at Sher but since we lived in Arlington, my mother used to have to drive me in every Sunday to go to... Uh, to go to uh, Sunday school, and uh, I had contact with a lot of Jewish children there. Although uh, after I, I, to tell the truth, I, I was not I was not a particularly good student. We used to kid around a lot at Sunday school and really didn't pay pay much attention to the teacher. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I lost contact with him after uh, I, I did uh, get get through Sunday school. All right. And then uh, I had a bar mitzvah, even though I wasn't particularly religious. Then what happened was uh, I, I didn't go to Hebrew school, unfortunately. I wish I had, but I never went to Hebrew school. So to study for my bar mitzvah, my mother hired an older man from Sheriff Israel. And he, actually, he, that was his profession, I think. 
he went around to teach uh, uh, boys how to what to do on their bar mitzvah. Mm -hmm. And I remember him coming to the house on Bryan Street a number of times before my mitzvah to teach me what I was supposed to say and do. <laughs> and there again, I'm not, I'm not sure I was the best student he ever had. But. Anyway, I got through it and I had my bar mitzvah at the Sheriff Israel in South Dallas. Um, although I must say I, I didn't really follow up on it like the way I should, hmm. I should, <laughs> mm -hmm. should have. Um, also, but but, but yes. as far as contact with, I didn't really have much contact with Jewish uh, uh, children or, or uh, teenagers after I had my bar mitzvah. Mainly it was Jerome and Shirley. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh. So now, now, for the record, um, it's this is that Shirley is my mother. Yeah. And I know she was very, very close. She always tell me, like, you're a favorite. She just remembers always being with you mm -hmm. and thought the world I remember, of you. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and many years later, uh, I remember I used to call her practically two or three times a week mm -hmm. until she unfortunately mm -hmm. passed away. Mm -hmm which was a real shock and blow to all of us. But I, I, I had close contact with her. And not as much as with Jerome, but, but with your mother I did. Um, going back, and I've got my, my cousin here, Sherry, um, but who's Margaret Sue's daughter. We both are here to get to hear you tell your story. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we, growing up, we heard that our great-grandfather, Frank Byers, was the first kosher butcher here. Now, I, knowing that the Jews came at the turn of the century, now that I saw that he was president in 1893, it's possible that is true. No one's ever really backed that up for us, but we had of interest. Now, you were mentioning that he had um, a, you know, a, a butcher shop, has. so I imagine that it was the kosher butcher shop. It, yeah, it was. Yeah, okay. And it was on Alamo Street, I remember that. Okay. I'll tell you an interesting thing which is kind of funny. Of course, my mother grew up in a very religious family, of course. But So when she got married, of course, uh, my father had this grocery store in Arlington. And so she had to move to Arlington, of course. And uh, a few, uh, just a few days or weeks after uh, they moved there, uh, my father uh, sent her uh, some food home to cook for dinner. And it included a very large ham <laughs> well, my mother didn't even know what it was. Uh, this is a story she always told. And she had no idea in the world how to cook it, so she had to go to the lady next door <laughs> to ask her what she was supposed to do with this thing. <laughs> and that's how she learned how to cook that ham for my father. <laughs> that's a story that uh, is always circulated. She used to make family. pork chops for us. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Later, she used to, we used to go visit her every week. Uh, with the boys, and she would always cook a big sun, a Sunday dinner for us. And she would often, often have pork chops and uh, squash pudding, and she was a real good cook, actually. <laughs> uh, now, I know we've been talking a lot more about the buyer side, but your, your father's side, the Ravenowitz side, where was he from? He was an immigrant also, I think, mm -hmm. uh, from Russia or someplace. And he, his... He came here because his sister, Bessie, uh, married uh, uh, Bessie uh, Bobcom, Bob mm -hmm. who uh, was also in the grocery business. Uh, uh, and he kind of came Morris, to Morris. Morris, Morris mm -hmm. Bobcom. Uh, and so my, when my father came, he went there. They, they had a store in Ennis. So when he immigrated to the United States, he went there and lived with them for a while, many years ago, and learned the grocery business. That's how he was able to go to Arlington and start a grocery store. And uh, yeah, I did have, I had a contact. Um, um, uh, the Bobkoffs had a son, uh, Kenneth, who was, a, who was about a year or two older than me. Mm -hmm. And I did spend a lot of time with him. And, I, on, and during the summer, uh, when I was a teenager, I used to go to Ennis and spend several weeks with them and pal around with Kenneth there at Ennis. And he would often come here to visit us. So, uh, and, and we would fool around at Ennis and then later on they moved to Corsicana and we, I would go to Corsicana to visit them. 
So I, I had some contact there. Yeah. Uh, now, you mentioned the last name was Rabinowitz, but you've been going by Robbins. So when did that <laughs> well, happen? Uh, when I finished my internship, I talked it over with my sister, and we thought that Rabinowitz was a little hard to spell and a little hard to pronounce. And it might be better if I shorten my name to uh, Robbins. Okay. So, uh, uh, Shirley's father, Abe, was, did part-time law work. He, used to, and he worked for the uh, Western Union for many years, but he was also did some law work. So I went to him, and he went to the court and uh, uh, had my name changed from Rabinowitz to Robbins. Now... I'll tell you, I made one mistake, which has followed me and my whole family for years. I spelled it R-O-B-I-N-S. Well, nobody spends Robbins with one B. It, everybody spells it R-O-B-B-I-N-S. -B so for the last, what, 70 years, and mm -hmm. all my children and everybody else, we have to say, that's Robbins with one B. <laughs> I must have done that 10,000 times in my life so far. Mm -hmm. I should have spelled it with two B's, but I didn't. Um, getting the opportunity to grow up in Dallas, was there some favorite spots that you had, um, if you remember going to? Mm, well, we used to go to, uh, yeah, we used to go to the Egyptian a lot when I was at SMU. <laughs> <That's my favorite>. <laughs> <laughs> used to, and then there was a, uh, yeah, we spent a lot of time at the Egyptian. We and. Before that, uh, Shirley and I and Jerome, we used to go to these watermelon parks. Mm -hmm. They don't have those anymore. They so used to be able to buy a, a big slice of watermelon for a quarter. It would be, they would have dead benches out all over under trees. There on Ross Avenue we'd go to. And uh, uh, we'd go there a lot to get yeah. watermelon. And we put salt on it. Yeah, they had uh, <laughs> big, big containers of salt on the table to put on your watermelon. And then there was a um, there was a nightclub we used to go to, but I, whose name escapes me now, uh, who that a lot of the teenagers went to, but I can't remember the name. Um, there were, those are the main places we went. Of course, you and I used to go to places. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we'd go restaurants to, and things like restaurants that. and things. Yeah. Kirby's Steakhouse we used to go to on Greenville. Remember that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they would put a dime on the table to pay for your phone call, believe it or not. <laughs> <That's fun. laughs> uh, uh, but also, thinking about the community, how have you felt Dallas or, or the Jewish communities changed over the years that you've seen since you, you grew up here? Well, I was, since I I was born here in Dallas and really grew up here and really didn't know any other part of the country, but my life has been exceptionally fine here in Dallas. I've enjoyed it very much. I've never had any trouble. I've never had any uh, uh, problem being a Jew. When I was growing up, you didn't hear about anti-Semitism then. I can't remember all those years of ever having any problem at all like, like happens now. Uh, I grew up, uh, my parents, uh, my mother was a Dallasite and lived here all of her life. Joyce and I have lived our whole lives here. We, uh, we know the city very well. I can't imagine living anywhere else. She did live in Mobile, which was a very nice place. Mm -hmm. She grew up there and I, I, we used to, one thing we used to do when the boys were small, uh, I would, I would take a few days off, and we would drive to Mobile to visit her parents mm -hmm. with the boy, with the boys in the they back were seat. They were asleep on, in the back seat. Mm -hmm. and we'd drive at night. I would, I would finish work around six, and then we'd get in the car and drive all night. It, then it took about twelve hours to drive to Mobile, <laughs> and we'd drive the whole way uh, to Mobile, and they'd be asleep in the back. And we'd spend a week or so in Mobile, and we'd drive back. Mm -hmm. We'd do that maybe once or twice a year. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as living in Dallas, I can't imagine living any place else to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. um, also, when going back and reviewing some things, um, you mentioned 
um, your sons by name, and I want to say, can you tell me your grandchildren, daughter-in-law, things like that, so that... Oh, well, my, our two sons, uh, <clears throat> Dale was born in 1962, and Craig was born in 1965. They had the same birthday. They have the same birthday, by the way, May the 13th. Oh, my gosh. Which really isn't that unusual, but they have the same birthday. <laughs> that took good planning, believe me. <laughs> anyway, uh, they were wonderful uh, children. They never caused us any trouble, whatever. They were g g really good students. We sent them both to St. Mark's, which is the best money we ever spent. Uh, they had a uh, really exceptional time at St. Mark's. Mm -hmm. uh, Daryl then, they both went to University of Texas and graduated from there. Daryl then went to medical school in, in, uh, in Galveston, UTMB, and Craig uh, went into business. Daryl is now an OB-GYN in uh, Plano. Craig has his own business. It's a cons uh, consulting firm. He worked for a uh, trucking company for several years, and then he started his own business. It's called Robbins Consulting, which has been really very successful. He uh, finds uh, executives for various types of businesses, mm -hmm. trucking companies, uh, all kinds of businesses all over the world, actually. Uh, now, Daryl has uh, two children, uh, uh, Samantha and Rachel. Uh, Samantha's married to a uh, very nice man uh, named Stan Stanbridge. Mm -hmm. Is that right? I can Stanbridge. never remember that. Stan is Stanbridge, and uh, Rachel is married. Rachel has a son, uh, Ryder, who's uh, just had his 10th birthday. And uh, Samantha, uh, Daryl's uh, daughter, has two children, uh, uh, Summer and... Uh, and uh, Summer and Charles. Charles. Charles is like six months, and Summer's uh, about two years old. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have three grandchildren, Ryder, Summer, and uh, Charles. So we have, and our family, Farsi is very close. Everybody gets along extremely well. We have uh, dinners together all the time, mm -hmm. and uh, we just said with my 95th birthday at Daryl's club he, he belongs to, uh, with the whole family. So we're really a very close knit That's family. That's wonderful. Um, is, in closing, is there anything that you want to share um, that, like, words of wisdom or anything that you'd like to, to share, things that you value, anything? Yeah, that... I, I, I would like to do that. I, to me, the most important thing is family. I don't think you can be complete without a uh, family that you're very, very close to. Secondly, I think it's so important to have a wife that supports you and is your, not only the love of your life, but uh, your closest friend. Mm. We just celebrate, well, this year we'll celebrate our 64th wedding anniversary, which is, a, I think, uh, a testament to how well we've gotten along together. I, I don't think I could have accomplished anything in life without her help. She's just been a wonderful, wonderful wife to me. Thank you. Um, I, I guess uh, those are the main things that I would share with anybody. Uh, okay. What about you? That's okay. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you sharing your story with us. It's been very special. My pleasure. I just wish I could remember more of these things, but uh, my memory is just not as good as it used to be. <laughs> I think you did a great interview. It was great. It was great.